channel or welcome to the channel if it's your first time stopping by. My name is Kristen and the channel is about beauty, fashion, fitness, health, and lifestyle tips and tricks that you need. So if that's your type of thing, please do not hesitate to hit that subscribe button before you go. And also, be sure to give this video a quick thumbs up. If you like the content, it really helps out the channel and lets YouTube know that this is something that you are interested in. Now, let's get into the video, all right? As you guys can see in the title, this video is about how I lost 50 pounds. And I'm just going to give you guys some tips and tricks, some things that work for me and how it has helped me along the way. Then it'll also give you a little bit of background as to just everything. So this one's going to be a little lengthy one. So be sure to grab your healthy snacks. If you're not into healthy snacks, grab your popcorn and then after this video, get you some healthy snacks. Ever since I've entered into adulthood, I've kind of yo-yoed up and down with my weight. So I would go from, let's say 125, then I would jump to 135, you know, get a boyfriend, happy weight, all that great stuff. And then I maintained there throughout college for a while. Um, then I jumped up to 157, but then I went down to 130 something, and then I kind of just stayed there. So fast forwarding back to, let's say six years ago is when I started to begin to pick up weight again. But now this time it was a little different because the weight that I was picking up was, wasn't because of just happy weight or relationship weight. It started to get to a point where I started to use food as a method of coping. That was my coping mechanism. So if I was stressed, I would eat. If I was happy, I would eat. If I was sad, I would eat. If I was depressed, I would eat. So that was just the way that I would deal with things and just kind of, it became a crutch for me. So I started to obviously pick up weight. I wasn't active, so along with eating and gaining weight, that started to add to my depression. So at 30 years old, when most people are celebrating, hitting a milestone and just getting there, I spent my 30th birthday, and I'm aging myself, I'm dating myself, guys. But I spent my 30th birthday um, crying. I was crying with my depression. I wasn't at the weight I wanted to be. I wasn't living the life I thought you should be living at 30. And just a lot of things went into that. So that being said, I started to eat even more and even more. So I got myself to a point where I was about 180 pounds. And I kind of bounced around there for a little bit, which at the time, my highest weight ever achieved was 190 but that was when I was pregnant with my son so fast forwarding to 2018 at 2018 I bounced around between 180 190 pounds right for the majority of 2018 and I always said to myself hey you know I'm gonna go to the gym I'm gonna work out I had a UFIT membership and I swear I went probably two times that year um, and then I just ate, I just ate and just ate cause I felt like it. I ate cause I was happy. I ate cause I was sad. I ate cause just whatever. Um, so then at the end of 20, 2018 is when I got a call about my dad. Um, he had all of a sudden collapsed and he was hospitalized and he was basically he was in a state of incapacitation like he couldn't move he couldn't do anything um the only reactions he had was to any uh, stimulus so if you poke him he'd kind of draw back and things like that so that that was the call i got so immediately when i got that call i went up there i went to go see him and when I saw him in the hospital and when I saw him in the bed, it was devastating because this was a guy or this was a man that raised me and he was this big, tall, when he talked, like his voice used to roar like a lion and to see him 
in the bed so frail and so helpless it was it was a lot it was a lot to take in um so long story short um my dad he ended up passing uh the situation surrounding his passing is still questionable and it's still something that i am coping with and dealing with till this day however what the what i've taken from the situation or what i'm trying to take from the situation is just the fact of had he been in a state where he was listening to what the doctors were saying and doing the things that he should have been doing as far as living a healthier lifestyle and in being more active and in, in doing the things that he would were supposed to do instead of just eating however he wanted because he was he was diabetic um he also had issues with clotting uh the cause of death listed on his death certificate was uh suffering from a pul pulmonary embolism um and then also at the same time he had a stroke so both of those together caused him to be affected the way he was so um with that it was it was devastating it was I, I just, it was, it's hard. It was really, really hard. Um, and immediately after his passing, there was just this feeling of, what do I do now? Like, I lost a half to my whole. Because you have mom, you have dad. Like, that's your identity. And essentially, that's how you define certain things that you are by your parents and your parents' actions. And I know it may be naive or whatever the case may be, but you always think that, you know, your parents are gonna be there when you need something or you need some advice, you know you can call your parents and they're gonna give you some real advice. And to, to have to grasp the fact that that wasn't there anymore, that sent me into an even worse downward spiral. So I'd laid in bed for days. I didn't get out of bed for days. When I did get out of bed, it was only to eat, get back in the bed, and then eventually I went back to work. And when I came home from work, I ate, laid on the couch. And that's pretty much my existence for about a good three months after three to four months after this he passed in december it was about march when i was i capped out at my heaviest weight ever um i picked up to 204 pounds and i have never been 204 pounds ever um and just to give you an idea i'm only five one in a quarter so 204 pounds is a lot for a little person to carry so i finally got it in my mind to where it's like i don't want to be helpless i don't want to be in a state where i need somebody to take care of me so i said i have to i have to do something i have to change i need to live a healthier lifestyle because if i don't I'm not gonna be here. I'm not gonna be here for my son. I'm not gonna be here for the people that count on or rely on me. So I have to do something. And also at the same time, my mental state was not, it was not there. It was very, very bad. I imagine the deepest, most tragic loss in your life and having to cope with that and still press forward. That's my mental state at the time. And then it wasn't just, a regular situation the situation was terrible um, it was quick it was all of a sudden it just it was a lot to take in so my mental state wasn't good um, so I finally was like okay it's time to make some changes 
it's time to do something. So I started researching and I came across um, Orange Theory. And I saw them a lot in passing and I saw like different locations all over, but I never like looked into it um, like that because I'm like, oh, I got a UFIT, I'm gonna go to UFIT. But I never went to UFIT anyway. I just, you know, had the, I have the membership to have the membership, right? So I went in one day and this video is not about Orange Theory. I promise if you want a video about Orange Theory and my journey with Orange Theory and what Orange Theory is all about, I will do that in a separate video. But I'm just telling you just about the mindset and how I got to a place of it's going to happen. So um, I got there and I did my free class because they give you one free class uh, just to kind of test out the workout and see. And it was so hard. But that was what I needed because in that one hour, I didn't think about my dad, the situation surrounding his death, all my problems that I was dealing with. I thought about nothing but getting through that workout. And that's mentally what I needed at the time. My first advice is to get yourself or get yourself in the mindset to first make these changes then find your motivation find what is going to drive you like i mentioned i have a son i have people that rely on me and that's my why I need to be here for him i need to be healthy for him i need to be able to not depend on anyone as far as my health stands why do you want to do this i changed my eating habits so i started cutting back on things as far as um, sodas, I stopped drinking sodas, I cut back on juice, I um, cut back on candy and sugar, but I still had my carbs. The first step was just cutting back because sometimes it's not as good to go cold turkey. So you definitely want to cut back first to get your body used to the changes that you're making. Later on on my fitness journey, I started to eliminate so I eliminated refined sugar, replaced it with natural sugar, eliminated simple carbs and replaced it with complex carbs. I eliminated unhealthy fats to an extent. We'll say we cut back because I'd be lying. Cut back on certain meats. I cut back on red meat, cut back on pork. Um, actually, at one point I eliminated it altogether, but we gonna say cut back because I change up my eating habits. At the end of the day, when you look at things as a diet, right? Diet is something that is temporary, that's something to get you to a weight loss goal or a fitness goal. But when you're trying to make a lifestyle change, it has to be something that you can sustain for the long term. This is a long haul. This is how we want to live for the long run. Definitely cutting back on certain things and eliminating certain things if you can. If you can eliminate sugar um, altogether, that's great. Or if you just need to cut back on it for a certain period of time, that's great as well. At least you're making those changes. The next thing was managing my cravings at that time of the month. That was the hardest thing to do because at that time of the month, I don't know about you ladies out there, but at that time of the month, there's two things that I always must have. Actually, three. Three things that I always must have. Some Wise Owl cheese doodles, some Sour Patch watermelons, and some Gushers, fruit Gushers. Those three things are always on my list and I know when I start craving those things that it's that time. What I ended up doing to kind of cope with those things or kind of get through those times was to switch from Sour Patch Watermelons to grapes. Added watermelon, like just regular watermelon and tremendously helps to curb the sugar, the sugar craving, it just, it dissipates. Like you don't even want that junk no more. And then like as far as chips, like as far as crunchy and chips, I would substitute that for um, Cheez-Its or I'd have like a little handful of goldfish or another thing that was super duper helpful was switching over to pe pe pecans, 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 
pecans, pecans, whatever it is, switching over to that was also another big help for curbing those time of the month cravings, intermittent fasting. So when I first started intermittent fasting, I would have an eight hour eating window. It is something that definitely helped me and it is something that I, I stand by and I recommend. Um, but by all means, I'm not a health professional, so please consult your health professional before you do intermittent fasting. If I fast at 12 o'clock, noon, and then I would close the fast or, in, or have my last meal by eight o'clock. That was my initial one, but that was a little bit harder for me to maintain um, so I switched it up and I changed my eating window from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. More so recently, I changed my fasting window from 9 a.m. and then I cut back at 7. So just bringing it up an hour because it's more sustainable uh, for me. I've tried different ways. I've tried to only eat like from 9 to 4 but that doesn't work all the time because sometimes when I come home, I still have to eat with the family. So it wasn't a successful way. As far as supplements, some people don't like to take a whole bunch of supplements, right? But for myself, I like to take them broken down. So I'll take like vitamin A, B, C, and so on and so forth and have them broken down into bits and pieces. However, if you're the type of person that likes to take a multivitamin and go, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But there are some supplements that I do recommend that you add to your regimen. Just a couple, just a few, and I'll tell you why. So the first one is turmeric. Turmeric is great for inflammation as well as any pain. So when you take turmeric, let's say you have pain in your shins, it helps to calm down that inflammation and that pain so you're able to sustain um, and work out. Chlorophyll it is another one that is great for your body as well. It helps with body odor. It helps with, <laughs> that's the main thing, body odor, and it also helps with digestion. So when people say my poop don't stink, you could literally be like, that's right, my poop don't stink, because it helps to cleanse you from the inside. So taking a multivitamin and then adding some turmeric, some chlorophyll, and just something for your hair, skin, and nails, or if your vitamins have hair, skin, and nails in it, that's perfect. The next thing I, I did to lose weight is calorie counting. So uh, there were two apps that I used, and the apps were my fitness pal. I tried LifeSum. So out of the two, I would have to say that I preferred my fitness pal because it had more accuracy in terms of calorie tracking but I liked LifeSum because of the way that you can choose your eating plans or your workout routine. As I mentioned earlier, I did start working out with Orange Theory Fitness. So when I first started my weight loss journey, I used to go to Orange Theory about five to six times a week and then I would add that in conjunction with going to UFIT about roughly two to three times a week. If I wasn't going to UFIT, then I would go to Orange Theory. Maybe I'd fit in like a two a day. I'd go like once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Um, but that's how I would kind of generally handle it. Sessions are a little bit different. I go to Orange Theory, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. My recovery days from cardio and high intensity training are those two days a week. And on those two days, I do mainly weight train um, for those days. So that's how I kind of keep active. One of my goals is to always make sure that I run at least a mile when I do go to Orange Theory. Um, on my active recovery days, I don't do as much cardio. I do a lot of weight training and I just do cardio to kind of loosen up the muscles and the joints to prepare for the weightlifting. I did not have any cheat days. Um, I had cheat meals, I had cheat sessions, but not a hardcore like cheat day. I'm at the point where I've lost a lot of weight so I do 
I get to be a little bit more social. So I do have like a cheat day. However, in that day, I try to make sure that I still work out to some extent. If it's nothing but taking a brisk walk for 30 minutes or going to Orange Theory in the morning, like kind of planning the days around the workout just to make sure that if I did intake a lot of calories, let's say I ate 1,500 calories because that exceeds my caloric goal for the day. If I ate 1,500 calories, I know that by working out, that kind of still puts me in that caloric deficit. And that's what I'm looking for. It's I mean, at the end of the day, weight loss is all about the numbers, right? So you wanna make sure you're intaking healthy calories or the right calories, but also at the same time, you wanna make sure that you have a caloric deficit. Managing a social life, you can still have your mimosas, you can still have your waffles, your wine, your, your beers, whatever it is that you like, but it's just having that balance. So make sure if you know that you're going out on Friday night, at 10 o'clock with the guys or with the girls, just make sure that throughout the week you're maintaining your healthy balance. So when you do have that one day where you're going out and you're socializing, that you don't take it overboard. And also just be conscious of what your body's telling you. Because that's not a time where you can sit there and plug in and be like, hey, I'm gonna have a double cheeseburger with a orange soda and some fries like you can't plug that in so just be conscious of your so your body cues like when your body's telling you hey i'm done just cut it and you're done it, never suggest or give anybody the tip of just giving everything up because that's not sustain that's that's not something you can sustain for the long haul you need to still be able to be able to socialize you need to still be able to enjoy what you do and what you eat. Balance your social life with your healthy life. It's not just changing your body, it's changing your mind, it's changing your mindset. It's a lot of things that are going on internally that you are dealing with when you're going through a weight loss journey or any healthy lifestyle journey. I'm not even gonna say weight loss. Healthy lifestyle journey. Um, and you may relapse from time to time. I've relapsed from time to time. And there's been times where I'm like, oh no, I relapsed and I should go to the gym two times that day. But then reality sets in and it's like, it is what it is. Like, it was one day. One day is not going to make me gain all the weight back. But it's just your sign. Okay, keep it together, girl, and get back on track. It takes 21 days to build a successful habit so go ahead it'll happen you just don't give up this is it's for the long haul so it's not something that's going to change overnight it's not something that you're going to be perfect at right away yeah. for your life you're doing this for your life to live your life if you like this video give it a big thumbs up um, stay tuned to the end. I know this was a long one and I thank you guys so much for sitting here, hashing it out with me. I know more about the things that I eat to kind of maintain and get through. Let me know in the comments down below as well. Um, if you guys have any questions, just leave it in the comments. Be sure to check the description box. I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. I did that. <laughs> this time is the charm. I know it. Like this is the right one. It's gonna work. It's gonna look great. We all look great. We're happy. We're adjusted. We're ready for this video. Amen. I need to start all the way over because I don't even know what I just said and there's a whole bunch of noise going on in the background. Like they rude, cuz they rude. <laughs> Alright. I love it when we ready. We's ready. We's ready. We's ready. Okay? Okay. It's your hi guys welcome back to the hi guys welcome back and
And in between time, go ahead and get ready for this video. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> Your type of jam. <sighs> So if that is your jam, be sure to click the subscribe button before you go. And if you like this video, just don't forget to give it a quick thumbs up. And then we can go ahead and put, what is going on right now? Like, I was doing so good at this CJ game. Like, wow, 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 All right, we're going to do this again, okay? All right, so. Have you ever had one of those moments where you just completely forgot what you were gonna say? That was me, just now. All right, here we go. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the, you know what, scratch.